Kristen, thanks. Also this week, we're talking about the race for U.S. Senate. This past week, Congressman Jim Banks announcing a run for Mike Braun's Senate seat, with Braun now running for governor. Representative Victoria Sparks also considering a run, with former Governor Mitch Daniels potentially considering this Senate race as well. He's already been targeted in recent ads by the Club for Growth, which announced its endorsement for Banks' campaign this past week. This week, Indiana Democratic Chair Mike Schmoll said Banks' tenure in Congress can be described as leading with arrogance and extremism and ignoring the interests of Northeast Indiana. Schmoll said Banks' has no votes on economic investments, job creation, and infrastructure show he cares less about the future of our families and workers and more about the scandal of the day in Washington. Now this week, Kristen sat down with Congressman Banks as he kicked off his campaign. He came here to our studio Tuesday morning to talk about the race for Senate. Congressman, welcome. Great to be here. So tell me why you're running for Senate. Well, not an easy decision. Mike Braun, our current senator, announced he's running for governor. And uh, I spent the holidays with my wife, my three daughters, and we talked about it, we prayed about it. We just believe it's really important. The Senate needs a shakeup, a new generation of conservative fighters who will go there and fight back against the radical agenda of the Democrats, not go along with it. I've been a leading conservative in the House of Representatives for the past six years. and. Just believe Indiana is a conservative state and Indiana deserves a conservative senator. So that's why we're kicking off the campaign today. We have a long campaign ahead of us, but excited to go out and visit 92 counties and make my case. There's been a lot of talk about the ad recently released by Club for Growth, the national conservative group that was critical of former Governor Mitch Daniels. Do you agree with that criticism and do you think it will deter him from entering the race? Oh, I, I don't know who else will run. Um, I have a lot of respect for uh, Governor Daniels. I, I called him last week, told him I'm, I'm running and I respect him. I don't know if he'll run or not. I know he's, I know he's thinking about it. There, there are a lot of other names out there who might run too. Let me say this, I've, I've always been the underdog. I grew up in a trailer park, son of a factory worker, a nursing home cook. I ran for Congress the first time and I was the underdog and we, we won. But I think Hoosiers want someone in the United States Senate who's fighting for underdogs, fighting for working class families in this state who are sick and tired of what the government is doing to make their lives harder with rising gas prices, higher inflation, um, not holding China accountable for stealing our jobs and giving us COVID. So that's the focus I want to take to the Senate. I can only talk about why I'm running. There might be other candidates who get in the race, but I, I just believe uh, America is looking for the next generation of conservative fighters and leaders in the Senate, and I want to be a part of it. Do you hope that ad deters him from running? Oh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm here to talk about why I'm running. I, I don't know who else is gonna get into the race. I mean, I, I know campaigns get rough and tumble, and you know, I'm already facing attacks from the Indiana Democrat Party this morning, but that's a part of running for office. I can only do my part to go travel the state, make my case that I have a proven conservative track record in the House of Representatives, and I wanna to go to the Senate to be a fighter for our conservative Hoosier values there too. All right, more of that interview to come. Right now, I'm joined by Politico's Adam Wren, who co-authored an article on this potential primary matchup between Banks and Daniels, which you described as ground zero of the Republican Civil War. And indeed, it could be that contentious, especially after these Club for Growth ads and a number of comments from the Trump team, as you reported in this article. Yeah, Dan, the uh, Trump world is increasingly targeting uh, Mitch Daniels, and they're they're upset with him and believe that he's sort of a threat to their regime. So we've seen Donald Trump Jr., we've seen Arthur Schwartz and others, uh, Donald Trump himself uh, in some cases, uh, and also Steve Bannon, all target Mitch Daniels uh, with some some really uh, specific, uh, vicious uh, comments, and, and, and the Club for Growth is joining in with their ad against Daniels. And many people, even some some Jim Banks endorsers, have been frustrated by this. Uh, Congressman Larry Bouchon uh, told me that that he thinks it's wrong what people are saying about uh, former Governor Mitch Daniels, that he's not a, a rhino or Republican name and, and name only. And also we saw Greg Pence, uh, you know, unendorse uh, Jim Banks, uh, you know, just days after uh, he told uh, Politico that he would be backing the congressman. So yeah. it's it's getting nasty. And Mitch Daniels hasn't even jumped in yet. Right, right. So, yeah, where does this leave other prominent Republicans in Indiana, in Indiana as they consider who to support? And, and what about the timing now of Daniel's decision? When, when might that happen? 
Well, we know that Mitch Daniels is going to Washington, D.C., as we reported exclusively. Uh, he's headed there uh, next Wednesday. We'll be in town for a few days meeting with former staffers who've run his campaign and meeting with several prominent uh, GOP senators as well. I I'm told that he's expected to make a decision here in the next uh, week or two. And so uh, by the 1st of February, uh, we should have some significant news uh, about where the race stands. Adam Wren. Adam, thanks so much. Good to be with you. All right. Also in Washington this week, the White House continues to deal with questions about President Biden's handling of classified documents found in his home and former office. The White House says they're cooperating with the DOJ as Democrats insist these accusations aren't nearly as serious or numerous as the ones facing former President Trump. But there are still a lot of questions and administration officials say now that the AG has appointed a special counsel to look into the matter, they say they need to stay quiet. We have been very clear that we are not going to comment. We are not going to uh, politically interfere. And, uh, and that continues with this also, this legal issue. And so I would refer you to the Department of Justice, refer you to the special counsel as it relates to specifics on this issue. Now this week, we also asked Congressman Banks about this situation as well. Do you agree with the decision by the AG to appoint a special counsel to investigate? Well, I think it deserves to be investigated. And it seems it's, it's not just one incident, but they've found classified documents that Joe Biden stored in his, uh, the Biden Center, um, also at, now at his home. So there seems to be a pattern here. I mean, of course, there's the irony of what the Democrats and, and some in the left-wing media beat up on Donald Trump, the, the unprecedented raid at Mar-a-Lago for documents that we still don't know what they are. But then you have these documents that keep appearing in places that Joe Biden is responsible for. There is an important distinction between this, the two cases. The president of the United States can declassify classified documents. The vice president can't. Still, Democrats say there's no indication Trump had actually declassified documents found in his possession. They continue to point to other distinctions between the cases, including the sheer number of documents and the level of cooperation after they were found. All right, coming up next on this week's edition of In Focus, we'll talk with our panel about the race for U.S. Senate, Jim Banks' big announcement, and whether Mitch Daniels or Victoria Sparks will be the next to join that race. And later, eliminating Indiana's income tax. Some at the State House want to go that route, but could the state afford it? We'll hear from lawmakers on both sides of that issue coming up.